Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. I'm Christine Zernhell. AKA Shep. And I'm Jess Budd. And it is officially Marketing Clock here on February 21st, 2020. Remember, you can catch our famous Friday news shows each and every Friday morning. We read all the news. So you don't have to. All right. And first up, a little bit of housekeeping. Last week on our show, we talked about how you could see us on Bite again. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. We forgot to do it. I didn't forget, but I didn't say anything. Oh, you didn't forget? No. How dare you? Wow. How dare you, Shep? So like anyway, bite. I think we're done with Bite. Is it? Can, can we agree? Yeah, we're just done yeah. with Bite. I quit. Right, you're canceled. Okay. And next up, Shep is imploring me. Big, big note here. Please, everybody, if you want to see us live, head on over to not our YouTube channel anymore. We are on the Search Engine Journal YouTube channel. There's going to be a lot more information there. We actually have a new video coming out, a teaser video that's really fun. And you can see everything you need over on Search Engine Journal on YouTube. There'll be a link in the show notes. So go subscribe today. All right. So what'd y'all do for Valentine's Day? That was the last time. I mean, obviously we recorded. We had a show. What else did you do on Valentine's Day? First of all, I have a correction. Um, I did not go to Denny's on Valentine's Day. It was Jim's oh. Steakout. <laughs> <laughs> Those are very different. <laughs> yeah, it's a, Jim Stakeout is a local cuisine here in Buffalo. Because we went to Denny's for like some other romantic evening. I don't remember. Okay, so did you go to Jim Stakeout again? <laughs> no, we went. Denny's this time? I tried to go to like a nice restaurant. I was just kind of being lame. I know you guys don't do that. <laughs> and the people on the one side of us were holding hands across the table and feeding each other. So oh. here's a question. So do you try to match? No. Do you try to match that? <laughs> you no. Are I they sitting on the same side of the table? No, but the, when I sat down, the place settings were on the same side of the table and I moved my husband's. Oh, the wow. place setting at your table? Like yeah. they wanted you to be little sweetheart? It was like a long table, a long <laughs> booth bench against the wall. Thanks for asking this. <laughs> and then there was like a table, you know, little tables in front of it and like one chair across. And our table had two place settings next to each other and none across. That's and I moved weird. it. That's weird. Did you sit on the booth side? Important question. I did because I wanted to see everything. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like those people. Right. Jess, how about you? I stayed home. Valentine's Day it was my first Valentine's Day with my baby and he's my Valentine. So I just like played with him a little bit and went to bed early and you know, I'm a mom now. So I figured with the whole baby thing you said, like I, I was like, oh, I mean, you're probably a mom. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But he made me a little thing with his footprints or daycare made it, but it's his footprints and it says, um, from the bottom or from the tip of my toes to the bottom of my heart, I love you. And so I cried. Wow. And he came up with that himself? Yeah, of yeah, course. I he saw him. He some real yeah. artistic promise. Thank you. That's my gifted child. What did you do, Greg? Anything? <clears throat> I stayed home just like you, but <laughs> we bought tickets to go see Elton John. Had to go get a loan to was, buy the tickets. Yeah, it's like where? Taylor Ellison Swift where style. Where was he playing? Toronto. Oh, I didn't know that. They're like so, almost $1,000, right, for a ticket? No, it's... Uh, quarter of that really yeah but, <laughs> someone i, mean, I know overpaid for, we're taking my kids so i'm probably bad parent corner here because no. it's like eight o'clock show but i named a kid after elton oh yeah that's nice so i'm like i gotta like this is the last tour i have to do it of course but it's probably not really the last tour i think he's like share okay well i'm gonna sell the tickets on, on seat geek <laughs> see you there yeah. all right <laughs> who do we have for sponsors this week this week's episode of marketing o'clock is brought to you by hrefs whether you work for a big brand, run your own small business, or do freelance work, getting traffic to your website is always an issue. Ahrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool set that solves that problem. It gives you the tools you need to rank your website in Google and get tons of search traffic. Want to learn more? Check out their blog or YouTube channel for step-by-step -step SEO tutorials. Jess, I don't know if you saw, they hit 100,000 subscribers on their YouTube channel. Good for them. I feel like we need that kazoo sound. And like yeah, they got streamers. a little award, and that's how you know it's good. Yeah. And something else that is not good as great is the offer that we have for you today. If you want a seven-day trial to Ahrefs, it is only seven bucks. You can head on over to Ahrefs.com to sign up, A-H-R-E-F-S.com. And don't forget about being number 1,001 <laughs> over on their YouTube channel. And today's show is also sponsored by Optio. Optio helps Google Ads managers automate time-consuming manual tasks so they can spend more time on high-level strategy and creative work. Optimize accounts, monitor performance, track budgets, and get alerts when important changes happen. Right now, our listeners can get a six-week free trial of Optio. Head on over to optio.com forward slash S-E-J. That's O-P-T-E-O dot com forward slash 
S as in search, E as in engine, J as in journal to get started. And it's better than the 30 days all you schlubs that don't use that link will get. <laughs> so thank you to our sponsors this week. We're going to dive into a couple of features as how we use these tools a little bit later in the show. Chef, what do you have in the news this week? First up, Google Ads added new and more granular conversion actions this week. This was brought to our attention by at Ability Designs on Twitter, and I'm seeing this in my accounts already, which is really exciting. But before, the only website conversion actions available were purchase, lead, page view, sign up, or other. And now there are subsets of the sales and leads categories. So the sales subcategories are purchase, add to cart, begin checkout and subscribe. And by subscribe, they mean someone who pays to subscribe to a product or service that you offer. That begin checkout sounds a lot like me. Oh yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. a big beginner. Yeah, I like to like start it and then I see how much it's gonna be with shipping and I'm like, you know, that $7 really set me over the edge. I'm done, <laughs> I'm done here. And then you wait for a promo code and it comes yeah. and you buy. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing to note on any of these conversions is if you use Google Ads, and just in case you don't, there are conversions and then there's something called all conversions. And I believe that a lot of these make sense to be an all conversion. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain this, but I'll give it a shot, I guess. Where if we're doing smart bidding, it will only optimize towards what you deem a conversion specifically. You can track other things, but it won't impact your smart bidding. So something that may be great is you want to know how well a campaign is doing and you want to see how, it, like, again, if you're, let's say you're doing something like target ROAS and you can see people beginning that checkout, that, that's helpful information. But it's not what you want in the end, really. It's not what you want to optimize for. It's just good Correct. to know. Correct. Yep. Absolutely. So they're calling them micro conversions. I like that. <laughs> so the leads categories are submit lead form, book appointment, sign up, request quote, get directions, and outbound clicks. So... This is pretty cool. Check them out. You can make conversion action sets too and group things together, group your micro conversions together. So very exciting. And the other thing is don't just set these up and get them into your main conversions no. column because it could be a huge detriment. I remember we, we had reported on it probably like a year ago where somebody had time on site as a conversion oh, yeah. and then ran the pay for conversion campaigns and spent, it was 30x the month, the daily budget in one day because it's I don't, it's a problem. So be careful when you do these <laughs> if you set up something that isn't you know revenue or actual lead based. Next up, something cool. Facebook launched a new app this week and it came from their new product experimentation or NPE team. And for those that don't know, it's a team dedicated to trying out new ideas and just seeing what sticks. So the app is called Hobby with an I and it's a place where you can quote capture and organize your creative process. And that's according to the description in the app store. It seems like that should be Hobie. <laughs> right? Like the kid from Baywatch? <laughs> I was going to say, the of hopester? course, it's an I. <laughs> Hoopster. You don't know the Hoopster? He's I like the little Baywatch. kid that was wine to, to the Hoff. His real name was Hope. Like what? In the show. What was it short for, though? <laughs> Hoopster? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's with an I to make it fun. But I, I kind of rolled my eyes when I first read this because I thought we have Pinterest and we have Google Collections now. We don't need another app. But I was wrong. So a lot of the coverage on this is kind of hyping Hobby up as a Pinterest clone or at least Pinterest like, but I think that's just for dramatic effect to get you to read the article. Cause if you read them, they all talk about what Hobby really is and it's quite different. It's kind of a place where you curate your own content. You can take pictures of stuff like crafts as you're doing them. Say so the example they used is like a piece of pottery and you're taking a picture as you go along and look how much better it is now that I've made this pot six times. I'm great. <laughs> So you're collecting your own content and you take these pictures, you save them, you can then create a series or a highlight reel if you want. And that's kind of awesome, but you can't share it in the Hobby app itself. It's not a social platform. So if you want to share anything, you have to export it from Hobby and share it elsewhere. So again, it's nice if you want to track your own progress, Greg, I feel like this would be great for your blacksmithing activities. <laughs> <laughs> Mine would have pictures of me crying because yeah, my eyes, like, that's what I was they don't end well. It's going to be videos of me swearing. <laughs> my tent. So oh, mad. no. This is just, it's going to be scrap pile. And the scrap pile just grows. You that's think? That's mine of me. Well, yeah. I don't know. I had ambitious thoughts for you. I don't craft, so it's not something I would use. But I was just picturing like Doug Marqueda comes home from shooting, Forged in Fire comes home to Rochester. I know you guys are buddies. And you're like, hey, look at my hobby thing. Buddies. Look what I've done. No. You guys and are from it, the same town. I, it would be good for me if it was crap. 
Craft? Eh, not so much. (laughs) Well, hopefully the app's not crap because as we know with the NPE team, anything that doesn't catch on gets killed rapidly. So if you want to try it, try it now because it's going away if it doesn't work. All right. Next up is another new launch from Facebook. They have a new Creator Studio app, short for application. Get your learn on right here at Marketing (laughs) O'Clock. And it is a complimentary add-on to the desktop hub, which is Creator Studio. And this looks amazing, actually. Big shout out to Jasper's Market. You can see them (laughs) demoing this. But you can switch accounts, manage posts, check insights, and respond to messages with this app. And to me, one of the biggest benefits here is that you can go between your accounts very, very easily. I was also looking through the demo video that they had, and they had a lot of other fake accounts. So we're going to play a little game here quick. We know Jasper's Market is their go-to use, uh, their go-to use case for all of these demos. I'm going to name something off and you tell me if it's real or not. Carb your enthusiasm. <laughs> That's got to be real. I, I, so Facebook came up with this? Yes. I don't think they're that clever. No. Jess is right. That's the only good one though. So everything else was, you saw one, you're like, carb your enthusiasm. Oh, these are going to be really funny? They're not funny. So here are the rest of them. Milk toast, real or fake? Well, you just said, oh, you said they're all bad. Okay. Yeah, they're all bad. Yeah, that's bad. They came up with it. Milk toast? <laughs> Doesn't that mean boring? I have but no not idea. But the, not the actual way you spell it. It's called M-I-L-K space toast. How do you spell milk toast? It's a whole thing. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know what <laughs> yeah. it is. I'm just It means like boring and like normal, I think. Like white bread? Like calling somebody? Yeah. Yes. Like vanilla? Milk toast is technically spelled M I L Q U E T O A S T. Milk toast. What? Milk toast. That's okay. not. So, milk space toast. Is okay. that real or fake? It's real. I'm going fake. It's fake. I made it up. Yes. Suckers. <laughs> All right. Next one. Spinach town. <laughs> <Get out here. laughs> real. Real. All right. Club soda. Fake. Real. Real. I'm doing terrible. Cornmeal. Real. Fake. Fake. Jess is cleaning up. <laughs> Little Lemon. Aw, that's real. It's a baby brand. Real. Oh, it is? I don't know. It just oh. sounds real. It, it's real. And then Duck Tunes. Fake. Duck Tunes. <laughs> it's got to be fake. You it's had fake. to make that up. It's fake. I made that up. That up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, a station for ducks. I like you know, it. It's a Spotify playlist. I'm tuning in for sure. Okay. Anyway, there are a few other things in this app, including rich insights, post uploading, edits, and fixes. You can connect with audiences. There's multi-account support, like I mentioned. Notifications are better. Um, And one of the examples that they were putting through was uh, pork buns for the Lunar New Year. So check it out. If you want to see the full article on all those fake companies, check it out in the show notes. And finally, in our main news, we have another new feature from Google Ads, continuous Audience sharing makes it easier to share audiences within manager accounts. If you enable this in your manager account settings, you'll be able to share all available audience lists in the manager account with all of the sub accounts. Google said it should roll out within a few months. I just feel like this is like a weird time for this. Like people are talking about like data issues. No. Yeah. I I really respect the look, like the (laughs) zag against the zig. This is like (laughs) all that. Like you're going to share your clients list with each other? Like that's not good. CCPA would not approve. Alistair McTaggart would not approve. Get him on the blower. He needs to know about this. (laughs) He was on NPR this morning. Yeah, Yeah. Was he really? Yeah, he he said he had a new data law, but like I didn't pay attention. We need to get him on this Google (laughs) Partners. I need to get in touch with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Because he's going to all these cocktail parties uh, yeah. with these Googlers. Mm. What do you think McTaggart drinks? Oh, he's a martini guy. I was in Manhattan. Whiskey. Uh, oh. Okay. I like him. <laughs> now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give absolutely no opinions. We don't influence in the slightest. You make the call. So this week's take comes from Thea Neal. Thea Neal on Twitter. I would think Thea. Thea Neal on Twitter. At Neal Thea. And Thea says, (laughs) Michael Bloomberg just spent $400 million on ads. Comma. 
but your clients still won't approve a $550 <laughs> Facebook ad buy. I love this take. I love Thea. I this feel one. this. And I was working on something where I was trying to explain all the bid strategies and like when you would use them. And I found myself with like target impression share and maximize clicks. I'm like, when would you ever use this? And I just kept thinking of politicians. Yeah, you're, like, you're that's Bloomberg. That's the only person <laughs> who would ever do it. You're Bloomberg. You're sitting there at your terminal and you're just like, yeah, maximize clicks, <laughs> target impression share. Let's go. And this isn't a political show here, but a few nights ago there was a Democratic debate. It's like, I'm giving all the money back. Or something like that. It's like, yeah, give it to Facebook. Yeah. Or whatever this is, wherever these 400 million are going. So, anyway, great take, Thea. And now on to our I See Why Am I segment. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. I See Why Am I, people. David Sotimano at D Sotimano on Twitter tweeted this week Here's a neat trick. Simply add save page now at archive.org. The next time you send an email with URLs and the Wayback Machine will automatically archive those URLs and send an email back with the archive URLs and tell you if errors occurred. You can just save right to there via email? I thought it was really cool, but I thought it was worded a little weird because at first I looked at it, I was like, what, are you trying to check all the URLs on your client emails? But that's not the point. It's just (laughs) to save things to the Wayback Machine. But it is a really cool trick and we tried it today. And just saved her small business URL to it, right? I sure did. For the first time, yeah. I just like the fact that you can send something to a client and be like, the changes have been made. <laughs> CC, say page now at archive.org. <laughs> like, yeah, I would never. Yeah, oh, that's it's funny. actually done. <laughs> yeah, And then they're going to get a response. It um, responds to everyone who CC'd on the email. Uh, well, maybe don't do that. Unless you're a <laughs> jerk client. <laughs> it's neat, though. It checked the links in our signatures and everything, too. So FYI, our signatures... Perfect. No oh, errors. Marketing and clocks in there. Yeah. Sure that's is. Right. Check it out on the Wayback Machine. Archive that. Now it's time for this week's lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. This week's paid lightning round is brought to you by Optio. Optio makes managing Google Ads accounts simple and efficient. It automates time-consuming manual tasks so you can spend more time on strategic or creative work. Whether you work in an agency with a large number of accounts or you're a freelancer responsible for a smaller portfolio, Optio can save you time and make life that little bit easier. Jess, how do you use Optio? So Optio has a really nice alerts feature that not only notes significant changes in campaign performance, but also attempts to find a reason for it to help you troubleshoot if you need to. So for example, I got an alert that one of my campaigns had a spike in impressions and it suggested that it might be due to seasonality or an adjustment that I made to that campaign. And it says, hey, you know, just a couple things for you to look at, which I think is really, really nice. The alerts also come with a notes feature so that once you figure out what caused it, you can then annotate those changes right in there, which is great for folks that collaborate on accounts with each other. They can see, oh yeah, we, you know, we looked into this and this is why it happened. It's really nice. And you can sign up for emails, get the emails right into your inbox when there is a notification for you. So if you'd like to learn more, if you want these notifications, if you love those emails, I, and I promise you, you will love these emails. Mm-hmm, I look at every one of them. And you, you always forward them to me. At all I do is four forward you guys morning. Optio. Yep. It's like half of my outbound <laughs> emails are, are Optio emails <laughs> saying, did you know this? Oh my God, did you see this? So if you want a six week free trial so you can bug everybody you work with, head on over to optio.com forward slash S-E-J. That's O-P-T-E-O dot com forward slash S-E-J. And here is what's happening in the paid universe this week. Publishers who use AdSense to run ads on their site are receiving creepy emails from scammers. The scammer threatens that they, quote, have the resources to flood the site with fraudy clicks again and again and again, (laughs) potentially shutting down their AdSense account in the process. So here is the ransom note that they're getting. This is the beginning of it. This is John Bonet level, people. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> it's crazy. What year is it? <laughs> Very soon, the warning notice from above will appear at the dashboard of your AdSense account. Undoubtedly. <laughs> 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 this will happen due to the fact that we're about to flood your site with a huge amount of traffic bot generated web traffic with 100% bounce ratio and thousands of IPs in rotation. A nightmare for every AdSense publisher. I flubbed a word in there, but you get the point. Yeah. Do you know how you know <laughs> that it's not a nightmare for every AdSense publisher? Because you have to define the issue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to say, oh, we're going to hit you with a lot of traffic. You're like, oh, it's going to have 
uh, a 100% bounce ratio <laughs> and uh, thousands of IPs in rotation. Undoubtedly. Yeah, that's, guess what? Undoubtedly. I don't have that in my nightmare rotation. Like, that's <laughs> not in there. <laughs> so to stop this from happening, the publisher are asked to wire $5,000 in Bitcoin. I feel like they could get more. Like <laughs> Honestly, if you've ever worked with Google support, you could get way more. <laughs> you could. It should be at least a Bitcoin. <laughs> It should. It's like what? 11 grand? Like that's more. Double it. This is 5,000 in Bitcoin. Oh, I didn't know. It was, okay, you're right. That is a lot. 5,000 in Bitcoin yeah, would I be. Put, I looked at I the mean, dollar sign and thought wrong. If that's it, they should just be, only be emailing Bloomberg if that's the case. <laughs> so um, I just like, if you get one of these emails, I just wouldn't send the money. Contact legal, whatever you need to know. Just wouldn't advise it. And if you actually get that email and you need help blocking this traffic, call us. Yeah. Like we can, like you could block all this stuff. It's crazy. It's not that hard if you have people that know it. We have a fantastic team. There are many fantastic technical technical teams out there, and you should be able to block stuff, even distributed denial of service attacks or DDoS attacks. And send me the ransom note because I want to see the whole thing. Yeah, and next time you make a threat, use the word undoubtedly because it really gets your point. <laughs> at the end of a sentence. <laughs> what if they're like, "This is Katy Perry, aka"? Isn't that the thing, the real John Bonet? Yeah, but she didn't write the ransom note. Oh, they think her mom did. Oh. Wow, you heard it here first. Fellas. I didn't say I thought, I said they think. Yeah, allegedly, allegedly. Okay, mm. Jess. Oh. oh, no, it's still me. Sorry, <laughs> Jess. That's okay. I'll 21 wait. gets another one, people. Can I say something first? Yeah. Our own Mark Saltrelli got 21 on something. Oh, he did? He did. He did. And then did he reply? He retweeted. <gasps> he retweeted. Did he mention him or did he just see it? Uh, he just retweeted Mark, but Mark Mark beat him to the punch. Him. What an honor. I know. With I a U you because he's British. Oh, wow. Love it. Nice. Okay, so he got an email from Microsoft Advertising announcing Dash Premium, a new personalized monthly email based on your campaigns. Basically, they're going to send you recommendations and insights on how your campaigns are performing and how you can improve them, and you can choose whether or not you want to implement Wait, them. Wait, I don't have to implement 70%? No, nope, you okay. can just take or leave whatever they say. They're just being nice. <laughs> so the reports include feature adoption rate, impression share, budget restraint health check, seasonal or vertical insights, and more. There is a sentence in Stephen's email that makes me think this is only for the Microsoft advertising elite, so you might not get this. It says, you're not just an important part of the Microsoft search network. You're a high-performing marketing professional and equal partner. We want to honor with a you that. <laughs> Thank you for your partnership in a meaningful way. Can I just take one moment and just <sighs> bask in this? I just want to bask in that feeling of... Microsoft making advertisers feel good. Being recognized. You Being know they're doing just, that on purpose. Yeah. No, they know no, what's going on. No, no. Microsoft cares. I know. Shout out to Perna. Shout out to everybody at Microsoft. Your support is great. Your company is great. We appreciate it. Just keep doing your thing. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying they don't care. I'm just saying they seize the moment there and I like it. Good on them. Yes. I am proud with you. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have an update on the Google Partners program requirement ah, changes. No. Yeah, that we talked about last week. After the whole digital marketing community was collectively outraged. Hey, hey, wait. I don't know if the whole digital marketing community is <laughs> Some, outraged. I honestly feel like it. Like I'm in a bubble, and it's me. So people are. It's just you. There's a fighting paid the search good fight. association. Paid search org on Twitter, and they haven't said anything. Not a tweet. The community is collectively not outraged. Okay. I They're take not it outraged. back. Greg is outraged. I, and the other thing is like every time Barry Schwartz, love you, Barry, every time he put, posts a tw a, an article on, on Search Engine Roundtable, he's like, the community is, is outraged at Greg Finn. I mean, he's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, it's like, it's I'm outraged. I am. I'm outraged. So what do you want me to say? Okay. So they are clarifying what they announced last week. They clarified the performance requirement saying that partners will need 70% optimization score. Okay, stop. That's not clarifying anything. I know. Okay. Is it go. an average? It, can you not have one campaign under 70%? Mm. I went through some of my pause campaigns today and some of them had optimization scores of 100 and some of them didn't have any optimization score. How does that work? Also, when you set the rules, nothing matters. Because you can say 70% you is whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. You can say search partners is 5.6% score, or you can say search partners is 30% score. And if it's 30.1% score, you have to put everybody in, in search partners. It's a stupid thing, and it's not clear. It's not clear, and it stinks. 
So the other thing people are, well, people are mad about everything, but something else that people, people are talking about. about this, yes. They don't, 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 don't minimize that. But you haven't seen anyone say it's good, right? Besides Google. No, no, no. I've, most people say, I don't care. Who cares about the partners program? The problem is that today it's this. What is tomorrow? Mm -hmm. to, this is today. And, and today they're saying all you agencies who are a partner have to do whatever I tell you to do or 70% of it, whatever. What is tomorrow going to be? The agencies that say, I'm not going to do that are out. Mm -hmm. Now, what is going to happen to those agencies? What is going to happen to us? We have an agency here, Cypress North, right now for full disclosure. We're a partner. What happens when they say, you can only have 10 accounts in your MCC because you're not a partner? What do I do? What do I do? Now we're going to have to start working, doing workarounds. And then is it going to be something to say, you have to have five. You can only have five people in your, in your My Client Center or, or ads manager, whatever you want to call it. Then that's going to be a problem. This, because what they're going to do is they're going to push the good advertisers out, the good agencies out. And what's going to happen is they're going to try to pull you back in. And not try, they're going to force you. And all of a sudden, it's, it's going to be a problem. I don't know why I'm talking about this. I was, I was like, I'm not going to rant about this. I'm not, I'm not even going to do it. And here I am. I can't, I can't stop. This is who I am. You so got to fight the good fight. <laughs> Hashtag. Fight Hashtag. the good fight. <laughs> the other part people are fighting about is they said a company needs at least 50% of eligible users to have earned an updated certification from Skillshop. And people initially were responding saying that this is a problem because clients were into the accounts, but I didn't realize some other things that other agencies do, which would make this even bigger of a problem. So I guess some agencies will make an agency account for their clients, so like Diet Coke at CypressNorth.com, and that's how they'll handle everything. And if that's not certified, that mm -hmm. counts as a member. And people will also have like their legal and finance teams in there, that counts as a member. So Google's not backing down on this. They said, we strongly recommend that any user who can edit campaigns is certified. So make sure you're at 50% if you want to stay a partner. And finally, we have more talk of the new partner requirements because John Henshaw at Koi Wolf interviewed friend of the show, Greg Finn. Who <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the show's going to be friends with me after today. <laughs> voiced his concern over the morally problematic optimization score requirements and talked about how he's fighting back. Morally bankrupt. How about that? <laughs> so... Greg and Cypress North launched an alternative badge called the Client Partners Badge. And to become a client partner, all you have to do to have this added to your site is agree to the following statement. We will always prioritize our client's best interests. We won't sacrifice performance by making changes to their account simply to obtain a badge or certification from an ad platform, regardless of their market power. So if you want more information of this on this or to become a client partner, visit the site we set up, client.partners. And I'm, I'm not going to rant anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come from a place of positivity. In, in my opinion, there's going to be a lot of people that will not take their client's performance and, do, and, and throw it in the trash. That they're going to put their clients first. And that's what we're going to do. We are not going to have everybody go through skill shop. We're not going to do everything that, that's required for this. We're going to lose our partner's badge. And we're going to lose a partner's badge because I don't want my clients to think for one second that I'll put them in a recommendation so that I get a badge so I get more business. I'm going to get more business by earning more business. And I'm going to earn more business by doing better for my heckin' clients. Mm -hmm. And I feel terrible, terrible for every one of these agencies out there that are going to lose, the, lose this and I, the only thing I could think of to do to come from a place of positivity is to say, here's something else. And what is it? It's, it's nothing, right? It, it's, we made this. We, are, we have a fantastic technical team here. We have fantastic developers. And we put together something that when you take your little badge off, this is something you can put back in place. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's from a bunch of people that tell jokes on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you know what we do? We take immense amount of pride in the work that we do, and I will never, for one second, put one single recommendation through to my clients ever, just to get a badge. And at least you can take your badge down and put something back up in place that can have a healthy conversation with your clients and let them know why you are not a Google partner. So that's why we did it, 
and it's important to me, and I hope that there's some people that's important to you. People are calling me. They see I, I, people are calling me. You guys hear it? Yeah. I'm ranting on the phone to people. I didn't. They're in Canada. They shout out Simon. Like I'm talking to Simon in Canada, and that's it's like awesome. it's 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 an important thing, and that's why we did it. It's 100 percent free. I don't even I don't even care. I'll pay you to sign it. I, I'll donate money for you to sign up. I don't care. I like this is. We need to reverse this. It's a huge problem. And I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. I think you've done a lot so far. I have, you have. Like, it's not enough, though. We'll just it, keep talking about it. Spread the word. Fighting the good I've, fight. I, I put out a blog post on Search Engine Journal. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that what the one quote was. It was something way worse before you edited it. Oh. <laughs> but, but before you, don't say the word, the one that, that, that you edited. But there's a, a great post as to why I'm so fired up about this on Search Engine Journal. And then I went ahead and I also made a podcast. The, the folks at Search Engine Journal, th- what a great network this is. The, they went ahead and said, we could do a pod panel as to why this is a problem. Mm-hmm. And we had a, a fantastic panel where we talked about it. We're, we'll, we'll talk about it at the end of the show a little bit here. But in the, the one article I was talking about, <laughs> one of the statements was... <laughs> While those with spines will leave, the remaining agencies will be invited to all the Google Ads conferences, will be decked out in a bunch of Google Partners merch, while all violently hitting the Apply All button. It makes me want to burn my Google Partners (laughs) hoodie that I have on the back of my (laughs) chair. It's too much. But if, if you are upset with the fact that you're losing your Google Partners badge, we made something for you. It's client.partners.com. And it's only because I'm mad. And we're mad as a company. We would never do this to our clients. And we've got a great team here and we put it together. This week's organic lightning round is brought to you by Ahrefs. Ahrefs makes competitive analysis easy. Their tools show you how your competitors are getting traffic from Google and why. You can see the pages and content that send them the most search traffic. Find out the exact keywords they're ranking for and which backlinks are helping them rank. From there, you can replicate or improve on their strategies. If you're not getting significant search traffic, yikes. <laughs> Ahrefs tools can help you, though, find those topics worth creating pages or content on. You can easily see estimated search traffic volumes and gauge traffic potential with their Keywords Explorer tool. If you are getting search traffic, hooray! Celebration emoji. Use features like their top report top pages report to break down which of your pages are bringing in the most traffic. Then figure out how you can replicate this success. Shep, how do you say traps? I have a cool trick for anyone who publishes content regularly. You can use the anchor report to find external links to competing pages. So if you made a biography post about Angela Lansbury and you link to an article about her performance in Beauty and the Beast on another site, and then you eventually write a post about Beauty and the Beast later on, you could run this this report to search for external links related to topics that you've written about. So you would find that post, and then you can identify them and swap your link in. I had that exact same problem problem with my five-year-old yesterday. Big problem. Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, the external links, the Lansbury (laughs) post. Same exact thing. I can't believe you brought that up. (laughs) Anyway, if you want to try Ahrefs, you can do it today for $7 for seven days. Try it, seven bucks, seven days, and you can see about those Lansbury Beauty and the Beast posts out there. Greg, what's going on in organic? Well, this week in organic, we've got a lot of great news. Well, at least one piece of great news here, where Google Search Console has a new tool that will help with site moves. And this comes from Matt Southern over at Search Engine Journal, The Journal. And he says that there is a new way that, A, you can redirect. You can can validate the redirects. It's redirect validation is the name of the tool. So moving a site was easier, actually, in the old Search Console. It was a little bit tougher in the new one. You had to, like, hop back for a while. But in the new Search Console, this should be a big boon for us SEOs that are actually moving sites around. Uh, one thing of note is that you have to be the verified owner of the old and new properties in Search Console, and you must be in the same Google account for that to work. Uh, and another thing, and I don't recall this in the old one, I just might not have ever used it because I'm pretty careful when I move <laughs> sites over, but you can cancel a change of address. Ooh. So as long as it's within 180 days, you can 
take the three hundred ones down. That's a nice cushion. That's a long time. Well, don't do that. <laughs> and hang on, first off, don't do that. But it's a nice cushion. You know, that's I guess. a lot better than like the three seconds you have when you send an email. I know you can change yeah. that. You, you can, can make it longer. You can increase and the window. I don't even yeah. think that's real. I feel like it's. Also, I heard you identify yourself and say us SEOs. I thought of that when I said it, and I was immediately wanted to just hit the edit post button and say digital marketer. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to think of myself as. Okay, next up from Ad Age, Hitwise is winding down operations in wake of jump shot closure. Talked about this for weeks now, essentially. Weeks? One week? Who knows? But Hitwise is following the way of jump shot and shutting down. Hitwise issued this statement, due to events outside of our control, Hitwise is winding down its operation. This is a very sad time for us at Hitwise after 20 years of operation, providing the first to market online measurement. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll take umbrage with one part of this. Due to events outside of our control, hey, you're a company. Figure it out. It just sounds whiny. Yeah and, yeah, and if you only get data from one source or if there's a problem, you should be having an ethical solution. Okay, JumpShot is doing something that could be considered uh, to be problematic based off of what side of the fence you're on. Come out and say, here's why Hitwise matters. We saw this coming. We take our data from good sources. You don't say outside of my control. That's weird. You're a company. You control this. Right? Am I, am I, I No, I agree. It just sounds yeah. whiny. You take ownership of it. We screwed up. We didn't give the good disclosure. Whatever it is, just mm -hmm. take ownership of it. Next up, New York Senator Kristen Gillibrand wants the United States government more involved in protecting digital privacy. And she wants to create a new federal agency to do it. When I think about privacy, Jess, <laughs> I only think about one. Oh, I think about one person, Al Alistair. Al Alistair? Alistair? Yep. Mr. McTaggart. Mr. McTaggart. And I think about another person, Christine. Why? A.K.A. Shep. A.K.A. Miss CCPA. <laughs> Miss GDPR. Shep, what are your thoughts about this? Okay, so the one thing Alistair said on um, NPR this morning was he's all worried that People who go to bed with their phones and then like get in a fight with their spouse and sleep in a different room, that they're going to be targeted from divorce lawyer ads. What do you think of that? It I, sounds like a lawyer. Is he a lawyer? I know he's a big time broker. Some people just <laughs> snore. I mean, I think about <laughs> different problems in bed that you'd be recording. Like not like, hey, somebody left the room. Yeah. Also, you might still be in the same bed. And be on verge of divorce. So it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. You might just have a really comfy bed saying, I'm not leaving. I'm not going to the couch. I'll see you in the morning, honey. You know what I mean? But just because you're sleeping in the same room doesn't mean you're not getting divorced. And just because you're sleeping in different rooms doesn't mean you're getting divorced. I don't like his take on that. I got up at four. <laughs> this, at four two, yesterday. I didn't. <laughs> and all I could think about was a stupid Google Partners change. I couldn't go oh, back no. to bed. Got up out of bed and boom, targeted. Yeah, for the day at four o'clock. I'm like, why would you do this, Google? Mm. Family law. <laughs> Family law. I'm going to court. Get the. <laughs> hey, honey, get the lawyer. Right, next up, Google users in the United Kingdom, aka the UK, may lose the GDPR protection with Brexit. Let's call it the GDPR exit. <clears throat> They're not going to be in the union anymore. Listen up, Stephen Johns, 21. 21. I got another one. <laughs> All right, that's it for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think hopefully lastly here, Barry Schwartz over at seroundtable.com has a notification about the deletion of reviews. So if you are a Google My Business owner, you get review, you get notified when reviews happen to your account. Hey, Christine gave a four-star review. You said Christine a lot today. It's very jarring. Yeah, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Jessica gave a two-star review. <laughs> I would never, first of all. <laughs> hey, Hope Athena gave a one-star review. <laughs> but now the good news is you will get a get a notification when a review is deleted in this test. So it's not worldwide yet. We should have this. If you get notifications when a, re when a review happens, you should get notified when it's deleted. Mm -hmm, yeah. Because that is just fair. Okay, and that's it for the organic 
What's going on social, Jess? All right. And social Instagram is testing a feature that would let users see the latest posts from what looks like just a few specific people on their the list of folks that they follow. But don't get excited when I say this because Instagram has already confirmed that it's just an internal prototype from a hackathon and they have absolutely no plans to launch this or even test it externally at this time. So Weep womp. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Don't expect to see it in a feed near you. But what you might actually see soon is a new tabbed news feed from Facebook. Okay, wait, I need to say something about this. You want to go back to that? No, I just, it's like, you did this on a hackathon. How yeah. hard is this? <laughs> well, it's, so I don't know, because the screenshot that they shared in the article was like a pop-up that said, welcome back. Do you want to see the latest posts from like XYZ and nine other people? And then you hit yes and you go to it. So it seemed, I mean, if somebody did it in a hackathon, clearly it can be done, but it's kind of weird. And like, if you're looking at just that content, I'm, I assume they're not businesses. They're not going to make any money from doing I just this. like the fact that they made apps that are Hobie apps, <laughs> the Baywatch app. <laughs> and that's a whole thing that's real. And then you have to do a hackathon and be like, oh, you might have missed this. Well, maybe if the new product, whatever, the NPE team came up with this, maybe it would have come to fruition. Do you think I hackathons are fun? They sound awful. Like, are asking there, the wrong guy. Are there like nice hors d'oeuvres? No. No way. There's, There's probably no like, hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Are they all in the same room? My, my, and this is going to upset a lot of people. And I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> my thoughts is instead of hors d'oeuvres, there's lots of posturing. Ooh, you know? peacocking? It's just, yeah, peacocking. Yeah. yeah, it's all peacocking. Like, are people just sitting in a chair and you're like, you can't get up until you're done with your hack? And no, it's a, you have to have glasses so I can make it. See ya. You guys are out. I'm well, in. Yeah, yeah. I wore my glasses yeah, today. Yeah. I don't know. There's no hors d'oeuvres. Okay, I'm out. All right, not sure if this came from a hackathon, but there is a tabbed news feed that Facebook is testing. They've confirmed it's an internal test, but they are actually considering testing this externally. So if you see this, the tabbed view would offer three ways of looking at content in your feed, relevant, recent, and seen, which I don't use Facebook, so my seen tab would have absolutely nothing in it. But the article <laughs> notes that better sorting of content might actually help users stay engaged longer, so it could be good for advertisers. It also notes in the article that you can confuse Facebook by what you're into if you watch like guilty pleasure videos and things like that. But like, isn't that what then being you on are the internet into is it. about? Exactly. I don't feel like that. I don't need my feed rearranged because I watched a garbage truck like miss when he was dumping garbage. That's funny. I want more of that. I also hop back into Facebook. I still don't have the app or I'm actually in there, but I had to try to share something about our company. We have we brought Jill and a chief growth officer mm -hmm. on board. Shout out Jill, who's listening. Hey Jill. And I was looking through what's going on. And those things in Discover on Facebook are so cringe, at least for me. And it's like I don't have any history in there, but it's it's the craziest stuff. It's like, oh look, we got a barber painting a beard on somebody. It's like, I don't want this. I love watching <laughs> Wendy Williams clips on the the watch tab. Okay. Does she have a show? Mm-hmm. The Wendy Williams <laughs> the Wendy show. Wendy Williams show. <laughs> no, but is it on watch? The watch has shows. No, like it's Mike, just clips from her show. Mike Rowe, who you're talking about earlier, the conversions, Mike was Rowe. has a show on Facebook. <laughs> Do you watch that Jessica Beale show on Facebook Watch? I've never seen that. Have you seen the oh, previous Beale Street? No. <laughs> Beale Street? No, it's like some like small town. Everybody went missing. I have no idea what you're talking about, so I'm just oh, glossing over. Oh, Saved by They have a oh real show on Facebook Watch? <laughs> yeah, Jessica Beale's in it. It doesn't, it looks okay. I don't know. It just seemed like something you'd be into, like kind of suspenseful, oh. like where are these people? I'm into it. I don't know. There's a lot of breathing in the trailer. It's weird. <laughs> it's super weird. Um, I love a good ASMR TV show. Where did ASMR go? Nobody talks about it anymore. I it's like leave, away Jess. with the You're wind. just normal. Oh, right. okay. Well, thank you. So real quick here, Facebook is also testing something else. There's a see all stories feature that they're playing with. It opens up a separate page where you can see all stories. I... I'm going to steal a joke from the article. Gretchen, stop trying to make stories happen. They're not going to happen. Nobody <laughs> wants stories on Facebook. They just don't. I know Greg doesn't. Greg doesn't even want Facebook like on people Facebook. People use stories on Facebook. I don't. Now. I feel like I was off of Facebook for a year and I logged in and there's all these people on stories. People do. Jill does. Shout out, Jill. She does. <laughs> I like her Instagram stories. They're wonderful. Her I think they're the boy same. was playing earlier. Oh, probably. They're good. I think that's what a lot of people do. Like you add it to Instagram and if it's hooked up, it just goes to Facebook. Your story does too? Mm -hmm. I think you can set it. Oh, who knew? All right. A new study from Social Bakers says that in Q4 of 2019, engagement with the top 50 brands on Instagram was higher than with those same brands on Facebook, even though those brands posted more content on Facebook than they did on Instagram. So sometimes less is more. 
So the study also gets into how vertical versus horizontal videos perform differently on the different platforms. So creators should definitely read up on this. But I would like to make an announcement. This reminded me, you guys made fun of me like a long time ago for not flipping my phone. Yeah, because you're a psycho. I'm not a psycho anymore. I got a new phone and now I definitely flip it horizontally to watch proper horizontal videos. And I can't believe what I was missing. You, you don't were have absolutely the lock right. I've, you have the lock on? I do, but I turn it off when it's a really good video, but I hate having it on all the time. What is wrong with you? You just, it takes one second to turn it off. Yeah. That's Except, one second of your life. <laughs> but it's hard with these new phones because the tray comes down instead of up. So turning the lock off, I've left the lock off it's since I got phone. this new phone. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. You yeah. understand how old my, my iPhone, iPhone was seven. previously. It, has there been a bigger first world problem than that? <laughs> never, okay. never. Anyway, I'm with the times now, guys. So watch out. Okay. Twitter has acquired Chroma Labs, which is the maker of the app Chroma Stories, which basically gives you a bunch of templates to pretty up your content. That app, by the way, if you use it, is not going away, but it's not going to be supported anymore because Twitter has this team now working on their conversations division. Hey, disband that division and make an ads division. How that's, about that? That's a good idea. There you go. I'll take that. Anyway, some people are speculating that this means stories are coming to Twitter, but I doubt it. They probably just saw some talented people out there and said, hey, join our team. That's what Twitter's missing, stories. I'm right. like, no, they're it? not missing stories. And I really don't. I'm afraid of what if they're going to make visual enhancements to conversations, though, because it's just going to look like your Facebook feed where people are like, oh, I can put a gradient behind my text. Like if Twitter turns into that, I'm not using it. So that's what I worry about. Hopefully I guess not. what? I you barely use it anyway. I mean, I'm trying. <laughs> I tweet like several times a week. You retweeted yourself today. <laughs> what? what? She retweeted herself yes. today. I did. I was trying to play with something and I, know Mark how, retweeted it. Do you know how much confidence you must have to retweet yourself? Kudos. I have no confidence with Twitter. I don't think I meant to retweet myself. I think I thought I was commenting on myself. <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> no. You should follow me on Twitter. I'm a great follow. What's All right. your handle, Jess? at Jessica L. Bud. All right. Yeah, follow me. All right. Finally, here, TikTok has launched TikTok Tips, which is really fun to say. Quick TikTok thing. Tips. The people want to know, Hope, are <laughs> you on TikTok again? No. Okay, so what's going on with TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> so for those that are on TikTok, you can see this new account, which features content from TikTok influencers that are, quote, on a mission to promote privacy, safety, and positive vibes. Did you guys look at this at all? I thought it was going to be like point your toes during your dance and smile. Oh, no. It's <laughs> it's much worse than yeah. that. Oh. <laughs> I like the idea. I feel like this wasn't created for me, so it's okay that I don't understand it. Let's help the kids. But the first video in the article was like a surprise party for this girl. And there were a bunch of people that obviously shouldn't have been there. So she sets her account to private and they all go away, except for the shadiest looking character of all. It's like just this guy in the front with sunglasses and a hood pulled over I and he doesn't watch. go away. I don't even know what you're talking about. You just watch it. It's okay. super weird. She's, in the show notes. Yeah, we'll put the, it in the, the show hoodie, notes. The, the strange hooded man. I just don't understand. You're trying to teach kids privacy and get away from creeps. And then there's a creep right there and doesn't leave the birthday party. You know it's really private? Anyway. Deleting TikTok. Taking the <laughs> hope, as we call it here at Marketing Club. <laughs> the hope approach. Love it. Anyway, that's it for social. And that brings us to our real life segment. Straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. Shep, what's been happening with your accounts lately? I didn't know that in Microsoft Advertising, you could filter your keyword report by match type, which Google does too, but they let you sort by close variance too. And you can only see those, and it tells you, you can see like how much you spent on those sometimes garbage terms and... See where you need to add negatives. But it's a close variant, Christine. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know, and um, I can't take credit for this. Thank you, Mark, from our team. What a shout out. This is the Mark and Jill show. Yeah. Okay, have you guys seen these recommended columns that are popping up in Google Ads? Um, I saw your notes, and I read... Yeah, and I looked for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> way, way to just poop all over a point. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's okay. They're a thing. They're underlined in blue. They pop up in your tables. And according to Google Ads, it's based on your existing account settings. Which settings? I sure don't know. I just want to point out that one of these recommended columns, which I assume they're recommending to everybody, is optimization score. Oh. Yes. And column customizations are set at the user level. So you might snooze this because you're like us and you don't care. But your clients, if they log in, they might see this. So 
just another opportunity to start, like Greg said, a healthy conversation with your clients, maybe explain why this doesn't matter, but it's going to be right in their face. So definitely check it out. I, I don't know why Google would show this to me and not everybody. They're really pushing this. We don't have to rant again, but just keep an eye out for it, guys. Okay, and I've been down on recommendations, as you've heard just in general, but I wanted to say something, and it's not because they're a sponsor, but I had a problem with some content that went down. Basically, a feed of, of a very large list of products went down, and I went into Ahrefs and looked at their health score, and you could get a lot of information just from the health score, what's broken across all different things. It's just a, a good look at things that can be really helpful. These tools that can be helpful whatever tool you use it's important to have a tool that can monitor and assist you in paid organic and social mm -hmm. and i'm just thankful for that that we've got these in place here at cypress north so it's something that i was grateful for to help diagnose some really gnarly problems that we had and get it fixed much quicker so i know it seems like a, it's an ad thing it's not it's, not. it's a performance thing now it's time for this week's WTH. Misguided. You're like, who does that? <laughs> just get rid of it. I'm over it. <laughs> Where we rant, rave, and roll our eyes about our trending digital marketing topic. What are we coming to? Honestly. See what had us asking. W-T-H. This week. This week's WTH comes to us from Adweek and David Cohen. And with the help of Jerry Media, who are the amazing folks who brought us Firefest. Amazing or questionable? How are they still a thing? With Ja Rule. I like they that made, that's what Bloomberg is going. <laughs> 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 they made the documentary, one of them. They, they made Which the Netflix one, one I think. Because I thought that they were the people that did the promotions. I don't want to be wrong, but I am 90% sure they made the Netflix documentary and they did the promotions for Firefest, And well, then they profited off of what a joke it was when they were in charge of the promotions. Well, that would be something called brilliance. Yeah. So they are working with Mike Bloomberg to deploy a meme strategy to try to connect to the youth ahead of the 2020 election. He's paying meme lords to post sponsor content that kind of promotes his campaign for president on their accounts. This led to a conversation about how Instagram from Facebook and Facebook handle branded content for political ads. And basically what came out of it is that branded content like these dope memes is not policed by Facebook's political advertising rules because Facebook does not make money off of it and there's no ad targeting being deployed. So this is allowed as long as the influencer or meme lord discloses that it is a paid partnership and the post is not boosted. So that was the boring part. But the reason why this is our WTH is the content itself. So the posts are fake screenshots of DMs and Mike <laughs> is sending them to the meme accounts and he's like asking them to make him look cool. But it's really weird and I feel like everyone's just making fun of him and he doesn't know. It, you know what I think that that's what I want in a president is somebody who's DMing people on Instagram or whatever to figure out memes. Yeah, like, I, that's what I want. I don't want him to know what a meme lord is making fun of him. Like, I don't want him to know what a meme lord is. I don't even know what a meme lord is. I've never heard that term. In my, oh my goodness! I know what a meme is. Do you want me well, to read you an example? I will yes. give you the ultimate example before you do this. I'm gonna or you, you give me the example and I will give you something you can watch if you want to know a meme lord. Okay. Mike Bloomberg is DMing Grape Juice Boys, who are apparently really big in the meme culture. He said, hello, Juice Boys. <laughs> Can you make an original meme to make me look cool for the upcoming Democratic primary? And then Juice Boys says, I don't think so. TBH, your vibe is kind of off. And then Mike Bloomberg says, I put Lamborghini doors on an Escalade. <laughs> and then Juice Boy said, what? I looked up, I put Lamborghini doors on an Escalade and like nothing came up. It's he a, made that up. Do you know I what that is? No. no. So it's the doors that go up. Yeah. Why would you put it on an Escalade? That's the whole point of being funny. It's not like a rap lyric or something. Well, the Jerry Media folks got you again. I, well, it's not this funny. makes him look not cool, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> that so didn't my, make favorite sense. Thing, my, my favorite thing about any meme lords is a guy that thinks he's a meme lord and there's a documentary on somebody that made it about his dad. <laughs> did you watch that? Did I send it to you? You, you told me a clip. It is amazing. And it's called My Dad, the Facebook Addict. And it's by Vindog, <laughs> whoever that is. We'll put it in the show notes if you want to see somebody takes memes to a next level. I guarantee you it will be worth your time. 
All right, and now we're on to our next segment, the Petri dish, where we have some ideas. We put them out there. We let them fester around, see what sticks, what doesn't. And this is a new segment called Thanks, Brad. And there was a tweet about Google My Business, whether or not putting terms in your description would help you rank better. People said, I don't think this information is great from what came out. And at Google My Biz responded with, hi there, the information in question is accurate. While it is not guaranteed to improve the ranking, it could, depending on other factors, as well as the information that is found online associated with the business. Send us a DM if you have any questions. Thanks, Dash, Brad. <laughs> That's like and such everybody, a sa- everybody says this is incorrect, except Brad. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> All right. Next up is our segment, Get Rid of It. And this week's Get Rid of It is Google is testing AMP results in the desktop search engine results pages. Not a good look. Nope. So if you are one of the people that love AMP, you can find it on your desktop now. Typically, you've only found AMP when somebody shared an incorrect story or <laughs> AMP story on something like Twitter. But now there was somebody, uh, Christian Oliveira, who on, tr- on Twitter who found AMP showing right up in their desktop. So I don't want to put a damper on this one, but <laughs> scram, get rid of it. We don't need it. Take it back. Give it to Brad. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> and now for this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our cool tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is SEO slides dot page and really it's more of a cool resource but that doesn't rhyme or sound good at all so we'll stick with cool tool it is a collection of presentations video and audio recordings from digital marketing conferences and it's organized by event and by speaker so it's really easy to find the topics or people that are of most interest to you so whether you missed out on a conference and want to catch up or if you attended an inspiring talk and want to share the presentation with somebody else just head on over to seo slides dot page and check it Any episodes of Marketing O'Clock over there? We should submit them. You can. It's open source. Yep. Let's let's do that. Audio only. Yeah, it's the rejection (laughs) letters coming up. (laughs) Yes, that's a great reminder. Head on over to the Search Engine (laughs) Journal YouTube channel so you can see Shop here live because she loves it. (laughs) Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's Must Read Marketing article of the week is titled, Revisiting the SEO Importance of Quality Indexation for Large-Scale Sites, Hunting High Indexation and Low Search Value by Directory, a Case Study. And this, you know what they say about me, right? Which thing? (laughs) There's a lot of things. (laughs) You know what they say about me, right? Um, that you're keto? <laughs> <laughs> no, that I love a good case study. Okay. Yes, I love a good case study. And BFF of the show, award-winning BFF of the show, Glenn Gabe of G Squared Interactive, had a great article that was a case study. Many people do case studies wrong. Not Glenn. And if you don't know what quality indexation is, he gives a good definition about what it means to him. And he says, I'm referring to the importance of making sure your highest quality content gets indexed while ensuring your low quality or thin content remains out of the index. Something that plagues so many sites out there, and this is the textbook how-to that Glenn put together. He talks about the pre-audit analysis that he does using Google Analytics and Search Console, the importance and power of adding Google Search Console properties by directory. Then he has a case study and drills into the different directories and how he goes in with no assumptions, but he lets the data guide himself. And then moving forward, he talks about taking action to improve quality indexation. And while he's going through these directories, he's actually got good data in there from this client he's breaking down. One of the things was that there were 25,000 pages indexed according to Search Console, but there were only 28 clicks. For those pages and he talks about why this is a problem and then what to do and there's seven tangible takeaways that you can use 
from this article. So don't miss it. It's over on G Squared Interactive. And if you want somebody to follow, if you like search news, there's nobody better than Glenn. So it's at Glenn Gabe on Twitter. Thank you, Glenn. All right, that does it for today's show. Thank you to our fabulous sponsors, Ahrefs and Optio. And if you're looking for another great podcast, don't miss this week's episode of the Search Engine Journal Show. This week, there's a special pod panel about Google Search Partners changes. Big thanks to the Search Engine Journal Show, the network, for doing some things that are a little bit abstract and really trying to bring some different things to light. But I was able to be lucky enough to hop on with Sam Rucklowitz and Andrea. It's actually, I can't even get it right. It's Andrea Cruz. Beautiful. But we are still like a bunch of heathens here saying Andrea Cruz. Like, yeah. who are we? Western Sorry, New Yorkers. Andrea. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Andrea. <laughs> Our apologies. But we had a fantastic conversation talking about the changes themselves, what it could mean for agencies and their clients, what we're going to do about it, and then also the future. And to me, I thought the future part was worth the listen alone. But don't miss it. Go check it out and subscribe to the Search Engine Journal show. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. Remember, you can catch everything from this show on marketingoclock.com. While you're there, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week.